welcome to Match Day Review. David May and Lou McCarry are with me this evening. And Lou, it was a real missed opportunity, wasn't it? Real missed opportunity, Mandy. Disappointing night as well because you expect to beat Hull, especially when the results went the way they went last night. Everyone turning up here is thinking this is it. Players are going to come out, do the business, and we're going to close that gap on a few teams up near the top. But after the first 45 minutes, I was, I was never that certain because probably the poorest we'd played for a while. And um, if the other team's fighting for their life, which they are down at the bottom, they're desperate for points. They're going to try and cling on and hold on and do anything they can to, to make sure they go away from here with something. And Fairness you know, went away with a point and couldn't begrudge him it, to be honest with you. Mm. David, you thought that goal was going to come, didn't you? I kept thinking, yeah. You know, we, second half was a hell of a lot better than mm -hmm. first half. I thought it was a little bit more direct. Sometimes you have to turn teams. I thought we did that. Uh, Zlatan, possibly half, half chances, didn't quite control it. Rashford probably should have scored. Um, but the chances we, we did create, you know, we didn't put away. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we, you know, they went up the other end at the post. It could have been a lot worse, but um, I would just got to dust ourselves down and get ready for uh, for Sunday. Yeah, indeed. Well, time now to hear from the manager. Here is his press conference in full. Of course. <laughs> no, I'm not happy with the result. I, I, I don't criticize the opponents. The opponents are fighting for life. Uh, every point for them is gold. They have to fight with uh, everything they have. And um, they tried to see what they would allow to do. The referee gave the feedback, and um, and then they were comfortable doing what they did, what they did for 90 for 90 minutes. But I'm not critical with them, because uh, if I was in that position, fighting for life, fighting for the for the point that can mean a lot for them in the end, I'm not critical with them at all. Do you think do you think they ask? Should have been sent off, Jose. Look, uh, I, I really don't understand why you, you, you ask me this kind of question since the beginning of the season, because it would be much more, um, uh, I, don't, I don't know if professional is, is, is the word, but if I was in your place, I wouldn't ask the manager. If I was in, in your place, I would just say and write what I see, what I think, what is my opinion. So if, if I was in your side, I wouldn't be asking uh, Manchester United manager. I would just, game after game, I would just write um, what is what is happening every every game with us. If not every game, almost every game. Um, and because if I speak, I, I am punished. I don't want to be punished. You seem to be very, very sluggish in the first half all the time. Do you know why that is, or is it just a puzzle to you as well? Very slow start. You know, very slow start. Very slow start, but uh, big chances. Uh, big chances, uh, big saves, uh, total, total control. Um, and then in the first half, the opponents start doing uh, what they, they made even, even more. In the second half, the referees start allowing them to do in the first half, um, and then I don't want to speak more about about um, referee and decisions because I repeat, if I was in your place, because I don't know, maybe it changed, maybe your industry is going in in another direction. I don't know, but for me, make make journalism is to say the truth. Uh, tell the truth. You, you simply have just to tell the truth. And if you go uh, game after game with Manchester United and, uh, and you see what happened here with Manchester City, what happened here with Burnley, what happened here uh, uh, West Ham, what happened uh, at Stoke, what happened uh, almost everywhere, 
you do your job and you do a, a public service, I think. Tell the truth. It's so simple as that. If tell the truth is also say that Manchester United in the first half didn't play well, so be it. Uh, we, we should play better in the first half than we did. So make journalism and tell the truth. Don't ask me questions that I cannot answer. You know, you know clearly that I am different. I am different. The rules for me are different. I am different in in every in every in everything. Uh, I watch uh, I watch my team play um, in a hotel. I was forbidden to go to the to the stadium. Uh, my assistant had a six matches stadium ban. Uh, I didn't touch anyone. Uh, yesterday, one for official told to a manager, "I enjoy very much your passion. So do what you want to do." Today, I was told. Uh, sit down or I have to send you to the stands. So everything is different is different for me, so don't ask me questions that you put me in in a difficult in a difficult situation. So to end the story, let's let's I want to say just a simple zero zero. Great point for them. Congratulations. Uh, bad point for us. We have to keep going because uh, we have another game for the weekend. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. sit down or be sent to the stands that's what Mr Mourinho was told tonight and he had some strong words for the journalists asking the questions there Lou fair point because if he answers those questions he's just going to get fined and banned well it used to be Mandy the journalist's job was to come here to Old Trafford sit down in the press box write about the 90 minutes or 95 minutes whatever it may be and that was their view on the game that they used to put in the paper the next day. That's all changed now. We've developed this uh, asking the manager, asking somebody else, then going round if you're not satisfied, asking somebody, until you get a, a big headline. And Josie just feels that there's been too many headlines, certainly about him, which I would agree with. There has been too many, Josie said this, Josie said that. Um, and eventually you do get fed up with it. So I think there's his message to the press lads. Do what you're supposed to do. Come and write about the game. And now they'll probably criticise him for not saying stuff. No, of course they will. <laughs> the two tackles that centre forward did. One in the first. All right, it was already booked. You're not telling me that second tackle on Michael Carrick was a, wasn't a booking. Probably red. He went over the ball. And the one in the second half. Daily blind. Daily blind. How can he not see that? And it changes a total game. But that's that's just poor refereeing. And I'm not. It's to slug the referee up, but he had an absolute nightmare, mm. time and time again. And you know, rightly so, the manager can't have a go because, as you say, he'll end up in the stands. So, how do you get around it? The ref the the press have to say that, you know, the referee had an absolute shocker mm. because, guarantee it tomorrow it'll be something else about what Joe, but we didn't. But do you know what? Kicking the ball away, time wasting, lying on the floor, all that. Fair play to all. They came here with a strategy to get a draw, and they got that. And we should do better. But do you know what? The gaffer's bang on there about the referee. OK, Sean is on the line in Blackpool. We'll take some of your views at home. Sean, what's your thought on the referee tonight? I think that fourth referee should be uh, video conferenced or something and make the decision through a video evidence. Why is that not happening in England? when it happens in all the other sports in England, and it's happening in America, everywhere, in all the athletics, why are we so in the dark ages in England? Sean, that referee should see them two challenges. If you can't see them, he's blind. I tell you, Michael Carrey, I, and I can't even believe the players' reactions. Mm. The lads have done Michael, he, he's there, withering on the ground, and the lads just walk around. To be fair, Maisie... Where's your balls to stand up for your teammates? You were in here, and you could see it. <laughs> honestly, I can't, honest, I can't, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. The lads, even the lads' reactions. You see one of your mates, teammates getting kicked, kicking the ball away. Where's the fight between each other to stand up for your teammate? That wouldn't have happened with Keeney or with Eric or with Paul in Smart use. The team would have been around them. And I'm not, I'm not saying all the players should be having a go at referees. But you can't speak to referees now. And the challenge on Michael and the challenge on David... We really did, and he got booked. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. But the t them two challenges deserved a red. Mm. So, certainly another booking. 
and then the second one David Green was a red. But the referee, surely the referee or the the linesman can see that he's, he's off the ground, reckless. We've seen all these challenges. Roll should have got done at Everton. I'm not standing up for him either. There's challenges that are going against us, and you know the manager's right. Okay, more reaction uh, to come now. Let's go to the dressing room here for Phil Jones. Well, I'd better start by asking Phil. We obviously the fans were concerned to see you go off. What's the situation? No, it's just um, my insole cracked in, in the foot, so it's, it's bruised. But no, I'll, be, I'll be fine. It's nothing, nothing sinister, nothing serious. So um, hopefully, a few days I'll be fine. I suppose you've just left a pretty down beat dressing room. Yeah, you could say that. Um, that is talking about the same things again. We, you know, we probably didn't create as many chances as we would have liked tonight again. But um, you know, it's a disappointing dressing room. We, we we needed to win tonight, especially with the results yesterday. We fell in our favour, and you know, every time we've we've had the chance to capitalise on, on on you know the teams of us slipping up, we've not been able to do it. And um, tonight's the same. Is that the most frustrating thing? Because I'm sure everyone was delighted to see the results last night. Just haven't been able to capitalise. Yeah, I mean, we said it before the game that this is our chance to, to know, put some pressure on the teams above us. Uh, we knew that teams would slip up around us, and they have done, and um, we can't capitalise on it. And we're bitterly disappointed. You know, the lads are, are down in the dressing room as you would expect, but you know, uh, we, we only have ourselves to blame. Is it one of those examples of a game where you know, like the early goal, would make all the difference against a team who've obviously come here, you know, set up to try and defend? Yeah, I think if we score in the first 20 minutes, I think, I mean, it's never game over, but especially at one nil, but you, you can't really see uh, much of a way back for Hull when we're one nil up, and you know, we're creating chance after chance, and as long as we're solid at the back, but we just couldn't get that goal. Um, keepers pulled off a, an absolute heroic save from Wan. Um, Nothing he can do is a save that the keepers made. Is we've said it so many times this season that the keepers have come here and, and been world class. But listen, it's, it's no, it's no excuse. We've not won the game. We needed to win the game, and um, all we can do now is is, is look look to, towards Leicester on Sunday. And thank God it comes around quick because we can try and put things right again. Yeah, and on that point, obviously you wanted to close the gap tonight. There's still 15 games to go, and it's still very tight in there. So you still plenty of time left at least yeah of course but you know straight after the game you're not looking at um, too far ahead you you're disappointed with the the game how things have gone uh, I don't think we played too badly tonight we, we moved the ball well in, in patches and just couldn't couldn't get the goal and um, you know that's it's been the same story a, a few times at Old Trafford thanks for speaking to us appreciate it cheers mate a few deflated players in that dressing room tonight uh, Louis is on the line in Scarborough hi there Louis what would you like to say about tonight hi uh, hi it's just uh, when you, you know you watch sometimes and it, some of the fans are a bit like the media they're so short termist everybody just it's doom and gloom that the season might as well be over we're in four competitions I think we're the only club in the country in four competitions um I, like, I was driving from Scarborough last season, and <laughs> the football on, the, on offer this year is so much better, it, it's not even comparable. The spine in the team is pretty good. I mean, you don't get better than De Gea. Baye looks like he's going to be as good as Vidic, where I think in the next three years he's going to be at that, that, that good, that level. Uh, I think Pogba should be rotated, but there's a class player there. Um, uh, Ibrahimovic, you, you know, people are saying you take him off. You've got Rashford to complement that, and you've got Rashford going in behind and Pogba waiting up and smashing the ball into the back of the net. Um, I think the only thing that we really need to look at long term is Michael Carrick's position because the, clearly we have such a much better win ratio when Michael Carrick's on the football field. Um, and he's not 25 year old. <laughs> we we all love him to be 25 year old, but he isn't. So only. Only thing I can see that really is looking like something that we need to look at in the next year or two is who will come in and do the job Carrick's done. So I'd be interested in your opinion on that. But I think, I personally, Griezmann will be there next year. I think we'll get top four, and I think we'll at least get one trophy, if not two. So listening to so many people ringing in being negative, it's absolutely dumbfounded me tonight. It's one game, one game of football. You know, we'll play about 50 games this season. And the football has been so much better. So thanks for letting me waffle on. 
pleasure, mate. Thanks very much, Louis, for phoning in. We we're going to have to take a break shortly, but briefly on Louis' point, is he right? The spine of the team's there and people should keep their chins up tonight? Well, winning a trophy or winning, getting involved in something come the end of the season, man, that's there already. We're in a final. Um, top four, I keep saying it, I, I do believe top four isn't mission impossible. Number one position, that may be mission impossible, but to be in that top four and get in the Champions League, <coughs> I think we'll me. do it. Let's hope so. OK, time for us to take a break. After that, we'll be hearing from the Hull City manager and also be hearing from Zlatan Ibrahimovic. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Match Day Review. Let's get the view from the opposition now and hear from the Hull manager. Mark, guys, um, you must be very pleased with your team's performance today. They came to this old traffic or a good achievement. Uh, good evening. Yes, of course, I'm, I'm happy. We had a uh, very good uh, performance. Uh, we we show um, very good organization in many moments again. Um, we play as a team. When you need to suffer, we, we're ready to suffer. But uh, our team sh show big character. In some moments, we personally in the game, it's important for me. I'm happy. How impressed were you with your goalkeeper? Yeah, I, don't, I don't like to, to talk about individual players. Of course, we play as a team. And this night it's good night for him. Maybe this next Saturday it's good night for the other. It's good afternoon for the other player. It's a football, um, but I'm happy with the, the performance uh, held in show for me. You won't say the end was spectacular. Yes, it's good, but uh, um, yeah, he is in a good, good moment. It's important for, for the team. Yes, um, the second half we had, um, we improved in the second half, uh, the, f the first half, uh, Man United block many, many times our offensive transition, our counter-attacks, better in the second half, um, when he changed to, to put three central backs, our team improved a little bit, um, you had a good chance when you put Markovic behind our striker. We had two good chances, the first Markovic and after when uh, Hernandez go along to the box. But OK, you don't score. And Man United as well have, uh, had good chances the, during the match, uh, but I think we deserved the, the, the result. What can this one result do for your season? Yes, he hasn't had a budget. Of course. No, it's important. Of course, it's important for us and give confidence for, for, for our team, for our players. Uh, but we won only one one point, and we need more to to achieve our our goal. But okay, it's, of course it's important. Uh, we played against big team, um, and it's important when you come here and take one point. I would like the question about Kamil Bajitsky, your latest signing, because we are component. So the question: What position do you, do you see for Kamil Bajitsky will be the best? Because he usually plays as a left winger or right winger. Or maybe you can see him as a wing back when playing with uh, three central defenders. I asked Kamil, and he wasn't sure what position you see. Uh, you need to, to wait to see what the position I will play with him. It's important play for for our squad come to improve. And normally when I. When I, when I take and I decide to take uh, Roziki, I think Roziki to play like a winger. It's the uh, best position for him, but I think he's ready to play in, in the other positions as well. Do you expect him to be ready for Liverpool? Yes, yes. Training during this uh, this morning and ready to, to play. Marco, can I just ask you about Yannis Salabar? Are you close to signing him? Is that dead now? You... I don't know. I'm staying focused in the game during this, this day. I don't. I don't uh, spoke with the uh, with the people the the, the the club. I don't know the like say the situation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. So the thoughts of the opposition manager and a really disappointing night for United. Three draws in the last three Premier League games. Where do we go from here? We go to Leicester on Sunday, I think, don't we? And uh, and that's a dangerous game for us because a lot of people are saying a lot of nasty things. Now about Leicester and their players will be up and uh, won the title last year and deserve to win it because of the way they played. Probably deserve to be where they are this season. Me and thanks to you for watching. We'll leave you with the thoughts of Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Zlatan, um, it's been a bit pretty frustrating night overall. Very disappointing, of course, because you don't win the game. 
would be nice to win today because the other teams lost some points and uh, we would come closer to the to let's say the top four. Even for me, top four is is not my aim. My aim is to win the whole Premier League. And uh, yeah, if you don't win, you don't come closer. That's it. This is one of those games where an early goal would make all the difference against a team who are obviously coming here to defend. Or you make a goal in the last minute, you will still win. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you don't score, you don't win. And uh, I think we had some great chances we could score. And, uh, and we didn't score, so keep creating, keep creating. And, and we missed the last third part of the, of the field where we are not doing like we know how to do and we're able to do. I think, I think that's nine draws this season, um, six at Old Trafford. Did you know what is it that is that's just missing in the, in the last part of the, the pitch? Oof, I, I don't know. I haven't been here before. I can only talk for the seven months as I've been here. And some games we had unluck, some games we struggled, some games we didn't do good enough. And uh, that's part of the football. I mean, we're not perfect, and, but we're trying, we're working hard. We want to win, we want to do good, and uh, that's it. Is it fair to say luck's not necessarily on your side either? Some great saves, maybe a few decisions not always going our, our way? I think today was not about luck, because luck, if you, don't, if you don't play good and you get a chance, half chance, and you score, that maybe is more luck. But today we had great chances where we could score and we, we didn't finish good enough. and. Uh, and that happens. Finally, and it's still very tight in the places for the for the top four. Obviously, you wanted to win today, but I guess it's still every chance of finishing there. We yeah, we have many more games to play, and uh, we, we will do our best, obviously, and uh, try to get in the position where the future looks good for the club, and uh, that is by playing Champions League. Thanks for your time. You're watching MUTV.